I'm, I'm recording this entire conversation just for full disclosure, wearing, wearing a wire that uh, Russell provided. <laughs> Do you want to call me back? <laughs> Do you think there's any kind of like a rubberized paint that would work for the tabletop? Look at that. <laughs> like skateboard grip tape. Right? Jeez. I need something something sticky on the uh table surface for the interactive sculpture because uh, if it's if this surface is slippery then the things just fall down it gets really hard to configure one of the sculptures on brown paper and uh, mm -hmm. do spray adhesive on it and then uh, yeah. stick it on this this is all just wood and then the the foam will be will go we'll just click right on top of it yeah. so we'll cut grooves in the foam panels for this thing too yeah. uh, and then just assemble it on top of it um yeah let's just leave it with two by fours yeah. thanks Have a good evening. you too These are, uh, these lights are a little different because it's wider. Um, so the other, the next one that goes next to this should be uh, 75 and 7 eighths. Taking that. <laughs> this is basically the um, stabilizer on the floor, so there's this whole long wall, mm -hmm. uh, and it's all resting on that angle, and then and the, the weight of the wood is stabilizing it along the length. Yeah, so this is on the floor? Yep. So this okay. is a, this will be along the floor, and it will extend out. Uh, it's um, 19 feet, I guess. Um, 
and all, so they'll we'll we'll patch them together with with more of these along the way and cut out notches in the foam to accommodate that. Yeah. One thing I noticed is how my experience of the styrofoam as a kind of tactile and uh, moldable material stayed true when I made these walls. It feels like a, uh, you know, it, it, there's something kind of unreal and, and visual and immaterial about styrofoam. There's, there's the making of the art and then seeing it out in the world and, and uh, seeing people's response to it. And you know, I aim for making work that, that creates the kind of response that I value when I see art, uh, that, that it's something uh, that you can't get anywhere else. And, and when you've encountered it, you're, you're not going to let go of it. You know, something you can carry with you and, and that something you want to come back to you know, in, in recollection or come back to the work or whatever it is, you know, I think that that's a kind of value that's not something easily defined, but you, you know it when you feel it. Don't, don't uh, encourage me in that direction. I might, uh, <laughs> I might take that to heart. <laughs> no, I had, I had a, a, rock, a can of Rockstar today with Philip. A can of Rockstar? Ro Rockstar energy drink. No. <laughs> it was it was purely Philip. The, the the peer pressure from Philip was unbearable. I could I just got cracked down and <laughs> I didn't. I don't. Did did you did you experience much of an effect from it? Yeah, I saw kind of crazy. Stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, an empty stomach. But, but was it rock star like? And <laughs> this, this sense of uh, art being a, a, a kind of organizing force or place and also a, a kind of container for the unknown and for the unexpected and for the what's out of, outside of our control and for chance and accidents and expression and just the general what makes of life 
on a day-to-day -day basis and entering in in, in, in some way that's, that's not a, um, programmatic, that's, that's, that's responsive. Do you find styrofoam like this? It's pretty easy to find these days. It used, used to be harder, but it... Uh, Is this like industrial application styrofoam, or do you just like... Yeah, they're, they're like, it's, they, there are lots of places that cut it for packaging. You know, for anyone build, building stuff that they want to, you know, or that. Sort of standard for, like, some other people might use this for packing pictures or furniture. Or, uh, or you get it sort of custom. We get it. You can. It comes in sheets that are four feet by three feet by 20, 20 feet long, and then they just chop it up from there. Take it around if you can just uh, help keep it steady there. When, when I look at the path of getting to what I'm making right now, it's been a process of totally committing to, to a body of work or to an idea or to a, a moment of what I needed to make and then moving on. In a lot of my work, I'm dealing with uh, the idea of a a, a kind of contained opening, that there's a uh, something discrete in the sense of differentiated and separate. Even framing devices as a, as a kind of separator, uh, drawing a, a distinction between one thing and another, and how those devices can form a kind of opening into uh, surprising places. I'm going to lift this off. Yep. And go ahead and lift that other side off. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Not tonight. I, I think we're going to have to just push it and try and get them glued up early. And because uh, I, you know, I think we should let it dry and not stress this thing. Sounds good. Is that right? <laughs> Probably the most satisfying moment of the whole, this whole process of, of, of installing the show and seeing people come in and, and see the work was, was seeing a bunch of people around this table moving the sculptures and, and seeing, seeing them posing questions non-verbally, you know, just, just uh, asking questions with their hands and with their eyes and maybe seeing something that they haven't, uh, haven't ever come across or, or uh, having something occur to them that, that, that's never occurred to them before. And, and just the enthusiasm that I saw when people came around and, and started interacting with the sculptures uh, was the most Satisfying moment. Very packed sure. with getting the show. But it, no, it shows. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you made these little things blows my mind. 
Reciprocal Linkage is a kind of formal organization where there's a frame-like element linked through a, a number of other frame-like elements and they're all the same in construction and each one passes through all the other ones and each one has the same relationship to the whole as any other one and it's a starting point for a number of different directions but most basically it's a kind of a point where structure and growth converge. I've always built things and always enjoyed objects. And I got to sculpture when I, uh, uh, when I reached a, a, a point with painting where I, I uh, wanted to, wanted to uh, have a kind of uh, tactile, immersive, responsive, uh, compositional process uh, that was that was somewhat akin to uh, what I experienced when I worked with color uh, and, and that's when I started making the uh, the reciprocally linked sculptures <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I feel like I'm already rambling a bit. Uh, I hope you are. <laughs> I, I'm like, good. Uh... <laughs>